Welcome. Welcome, honorable parents, family, and guests to our cultural evening with the ancient Chinese. I am Lynn Manuel. With your children, we have been learning about the people of China. The Chinese call their land Changquo, which means the central country, appropriate to this vast nation, surrounded on all sides by inhospitable lands. For a long time, evidence suggested that Asia was the continent upon which the first humans walked. Humans that are 600,000 years old have been found in China's Lanchan region. They are the bones of Syngenthropus, or Man of China, who lived during the Paleolithic Age. Thousands of years later, during the Neolithic Age, farming of the rich soil on the banks of the great rivers began. They learned how to till the land, although they continued to hunt and gather. In larger villages, people began to grow grain, millet, then wheat, raise pigs, and work with wood. The people living along the Yellow River in China were more advanced than in neighboring regions. For example, at the Banpur site near Chang'an, remains of a permanent village dating back to 6000 BC were found, including huts, stone plowshares, beautiful oven-baked pottery, and carefully constructed tombs. On the banks of the Yellow River, the first Chinese cities arose. They were surrounded by high earthen ramparts and served as military and religious centers. They also became residential sites for the nobility and later capital cities. Much of China's strength came from its inability to endure. More than 2,000 years passed from the time of Qin, 221 BC, who founded the first imperial regime and the fall of the last dynasty in the beginning of the 20th century. The population during this time grew from 40 to 400 million. Twelve dynasties rose and fell, and significant scientific discoveries were made. As long ago as the 6th century BC, the fields of science and technology were more advanced in China than in any other part of the world. The study of the stars and natural elements played an important role in the political and religious practices, and may explain why they were so advanced. The most interesting in astronomy probably because of their need to maintain harmony between heaven and earth and their reliance on the calendar. By 350 BC, the Chinese had drawn a map of the heavens, classified 1,400 stars in 284 constellations. They could explain the occurrence of eclipses, the aurora borealis, and comets. One major invention included paper in the second century. The first printing set up system woodblock was developed. The wheelbarrow came into use in the second century and the harness in the seventh, gunpowder in the tenth, and the rudder in the fourteenth. This year, the Peking players are trying a new format. We are going to travel back in time and meet people of the past. We now take you to our live action reporter, Bella O. Winfrey on location in the ancient city of Luoyang, China. Rumor has it that she has some important discoveries of her own. People out of the past. Here she is now, Bella O. Winfrey. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I am talking to you from the ancient city of Luoyang, China. It is a city between the Ming Mountains and the Low River. We entered the city through one of the gates that serve as watchtowers. The northern area is occupied by the imperial palace with granaries, stables, and temples. We are here trying to find information about the needs of man in ancient China. Here comes someone now with what looks like a meal of some sort. Please, tell me what you have there. I am the food preparer. The wealthy eat lavishly king, which is stew, of ox, mutton, deer, pig, and even dog. This is followed by exotic dishes, such as bear paw, baked owl, and panther's breast. Our favorite vegetables include 
bamboo shoots. And lotus roots. The meal ends with a bowl of rice millet and fruits. Wine made from grain is the beverage. The poor do not eat with such luxury. Most people live on king stew and a bowl of rice. Rarely do they eat meat. From beans from beans and wheat to they make bean curd and noodles and steamed buns. Here, try some. No thanks. I'm on a diet. Just in case I did eat that food, I see a doctor, a Chinese healer over there. Please, share with us how you heal people in the ancient city of Wayne. For centuries, we have used a variety of medicinal plants. We use matzo, where we burn up a city plants on the area of pain. Emperor Xing Yang, from the year 2700 BC, created prescriptions. T uh, take some crushed tortoiseshell and brew it up as a tea. Gallstones are gone. Arthritis? Try powdered tiger bone tea. A cut that won't, a cut that won't heal? Um, a paste from burnt elephant. Oh, oh, make a paste from burnt elephant skin. Tired and run down. A soup of cobra blood is just what the doctor ordered. Acupuncture is another medical practice that we have developed. Um, it can cure illness or be used as an anesthetic. The patient is stuck painlessly with a variety of fine needles at with a variety of fine needles at various points on the body. Here, try some. No thanks. That's not what my doctor ordered. And now, a word from our sponsor, Fang's Fabulous Fitness Facility. Tai Chi is a 2,000 year old form of exercise. A way to keep your body balanced in the opposite forces called yin and yang. Folklore says Tai Chi was invented by Zhang Sun Fang while he was in the Ludang Mountain studying the movements of cranes and snakes and adapted the movements to his techniques. Tai Chi uses breathing, visualization, and movement to work the entire body at once. Relaxation and breathing generate good health, longevity, and internal strength. Join us for a free Tai Chi lesson brought to you by Fing's fabulous fitness class.
Welcome back to Loy Inc. I hope you are feeling balanced after your workout at Fens. I just noticed some beautiful examples of the art of these ancient people. This looks like an ancient art fair. Please, show us your wares. We began casting elaborate bronze vessels over 3,000 years ago, decorated with animal faces and designs used for art ceremonies. Jade is a highly prized green stone that is ground into smooth shapes. It represents the five virtues, charity, trustworthiness, wisdom, courage, and fairness. We even use it to preserve and protect our princes and princesses. During the Golden Age of the Tang Dynasty, we began making it with green and orange glazed pottery. During the Ming Dynasty, the most elaborate ceramics are porcelain. During the Ming Dynasty, we made it with blue and white designs. I'm also a calligrapher. I do brushwork with ink and watercolors using special pointed brushes held on the upright position. It is such an important art that even the emperor is schooled in it. I could see some of this art in my home, especially the Ming pottery. Here comes a very interesting woman. I hear she's a fortune teller, and in China, fortunes have been told for 2,000 years. Please, let me show you the wonder of bamboo sticks, cow chim, or chi chi sticks. Your luck today is, I see two big W's, a lot of the color purple, and days where you talk to people for hours. I do love the color purple. I just noticed a very important looking person. Perhaps the ruler? Tell us, are you the emperor? The divine ruler? I am Chin. The first unifier. I created strict laws, taxed everyone, and I one style of writing for everyone. I commanded canals be built and joined all walls into one 1,500 mile long wall, the Great Wall, to protect our land from invaders. China comes from my name. I plan to have 7,000 terracotta warriors buried in front of and around of my tomb, along, oh, just like this one. It's now 270 BC. Along with my terracotta warriors, I will live on forever. That was impressive. The great emperor Chin. I heard that the oldest Chinese beliefs concern natural elements. Rivers, streams, wind, sand, and mountains. And of course, heaven. The gods kept harmony and the balance and the yin and yang for everyone. The world was one, with only one sovereign leader, the emperor. Son of Heaven, who I think we just met. He guaranteed universal order. Just arriving on our red carpet are three of the celestial characters. Hail to the celestial characters. I am Zhou Shen. My name means Star of Long Jeffy. I am the symbol of long life. If you hang my picture on your wall on your birthday, I will grant you long life. I am quiet. God is for mercy. I rescue people from the sea and give our children. I am G. 
Ching O, right of me. I took the elixir of immortality. And I live on forever in the silvery moon. We were so lucky to meet the celestial characters as they left the heavenly palace. Listen, I hear a crowd gathering. During the Han Dynasty, the dragon dance began. The dragon symbolizes power, wisdom, and wealth, all blending together to create good luck. As part of the spring festival, the dragon chases the pearl, pursuing knowledge. Enter the dragon! Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is time to move forward to the year 2021. The sun is setting over the ancient city of Luoyang, China. This is Bella O. Winfrey, signing off from Channel DHMC. Zaigen. Good night.
canvas painting. This year's culture festival focuses on ancient China. In our class, we have many creative works about ancient Chinese art. I really like these works because we can use paint and other mediums. I especially like painting on canvases because it was challenging. One of the subjects I chose to paint was a dragon. I chose a dragon because of all the details it included. My other painting was a flower. In all, this work was very fun. Zodiac art. Zodiac art is one of my favorite things we have done this year. We studied the Chinese zodiac earlier this year and then we created our own masterpiece to keep forever. We made this zodiac art by carefully coloring a representation of Chinese zodiac that we chose. We colored them with pencil and marker. Next, we cut them out and mod podge them to a plate. This work teaches us about the zodiacs of China. It was fun. I enjoyed this work because I think zodiacs are cool and I wanted to learn about Chinese zodiacs. The ancient China Chinese timeline is a work that I loved. I did learn about uh, ancient Chinese inventions. Some of my classmates chose topics of dynasties, Chinese porcelain, Chinese emperors, and more. To do this work, we uh, were each given a piece of timeline paper. We then decided what we wanted to research and began researching. We then had to measure our sections on our timeline and write everything we know about our subjects and include a picture. When we were finished, we added bamboo on each si side to make timeline scrolls. Ancient Chinese personal project. Each student chose their own personal project for the cultural festival. It is a hands-on project that, that we each make and we get to choose our, our subject. I chose blue and white porcelain. I made my project out of wood. I asked my uncle to help me. I printed a picture of the, the porcelain pot. Then we cut a square of wood. After that, I glued the, the picture on to the shape of wood to get the shape of the porcelain pot. We then cut the wood to the shape of the porcelain pot. After that, we sanded it and I painted the designs on. Research reports. Every year we research and write reports for culture festival. This year we each wrote three reports. I chose to research the Great Wall of China, Chinese gods and goddesses, and the flora and fauna of China. My favorite report that I wrote this year was my report about the Great Wall of China. While researching about the wall, I learned that the wall was built over a period of 2,000 years. It was built during more than seven different dynasties and that it was declared one of the seven wonders of the world. It is estimated that one million soldiers guarded it during the height of the Ming Dynasty. Carded Material History Study Many of our works in Montessori include card works, also known as carded materials. For our ancient China study, we had three boxes of carded materials to work with. They included cards about Chinese dynasties and history. During my card material work, I learned that porcelain is a type of ceramic, and I learned that you wore, if you wore yellow silk in ancient China, that you'd be thrown in a dungeon because yellow silk was only worn by the emperor. Chinese architecture. I researched Chinese architecture for one of my three research reports. I find Chinese architecture unique and beautiful. I find many things interesting, like how many buildings were made out of wood, but did not use any nails. I admired the old technique that the Chinese used. In one end of a piece of wood, about two centimeters from the edge would jet out on all four sides. It was the same on the other end, but it would jet in. They would then connect and no nails were needed. Chinese literature. Our read aloud novel study included 
two books focused on China. The first book we read was Where the Mountain Meets the Moon. Inspired by Chinese folklore, it tells the story of a young girl who sets off on a thrilling adventure in order to bring fortune to her village. The second book we read, called When the Sea Turned to Silver, was written by the same author and is considered a companion piece to Where the Mountain Meets the Moon. Also featuring a female protagonist in When the Sea Turned to Silver, our heroine is the granddaughter of a famous storyteller who was kidnapped by the emperor. Pin Mei and her mysterious friend Yi Shan must go out into the world and save her grandmother before it's too late. Half Face Art Every year in our upper elementary class for the cultural festival, we all get to make a half face. Every student gets to pick a god or goddess for one half, and they use their own half for the other. Last year, because of COVID, we weren't able to do this work. Now that I am in my second year of Upper L, I finally get to experience it, and it is one of my favorite parts of the Culture Festival. For my half face, I chose to do Guan Yin, the goddess of mercy and kindness. We first start out by doing research about your god or goddess. We then find a picture and draw it and color it to make it realistic. My favorite part about this work is that we get to put a picture of half of your face next, next to your drawing, and you look like one complete person. In the end, all the students' work looks amazing when it's all displayed. Chinese ginger jars. One of our studies for this year's culture festival was about blue and white porcelain. Every student chose an assortment of blue colored pencils and colored our jars. We could use a little bit of pink and green to make them look like actual blue and white porcelain. Our teacher, Mary Beth, was kind enough to bring in some of her own ginger jars that was given from China. Most of them are blue and white, but some of them had different colors. All of us got to look and observe the jars while we colored. When they were finished, they were cut and laminated. The finished products were full of beautiful designs. Great Wall of China. I like the Great Wall of China and I found it very interesting. The reason why, because it took a long time to be built and I thought it was cool. The other reason why is the way it was made. I liked how it was built out of earth and stone. Ancient Chinese defense. I like ancient Chinese defense because all of the weapons and the fighting techniques, the trained fighters are called Shaolin monks. When they, when they trained, they made their whole body almost indestructible. I found their weapons very interesting because of their shapes and sizes. Some examples are the snake spear. It is a special spear with a spearhead weaving like a snake. The mobile tower is a 30 meter tall mobile tower used to watch another army's activities in the city of Kanyang. Both of friendship or ancient Chinese friendship poem. One of my favorite works is the ancient Chinese friendship poem called Oath of Friendship. Why I chose this project out of all the projects is because it is a way to express feelings. If you gave this poem to someone you want to have your friendship never end with, it would probably touch their heart and also be amusing at the same time. This poem is written with a unique list of almost impossible things and how your friendship would not end until these things happen. I wrote a friendship poem with a big colored piece of paper. I made a line going up and down in the resemblance of a mountain range. Then I carefully went over it with some chalk to make the line bigger and powdery. Then I wrapped a piece of Kleenex around my finger and smudged it down, which made a cool effect. Then I wrote my poem on the line of it and it became a work of art. It was really fun. Dynasties of Ancient China. Dynasty research is one of my favorite works for the, of the cultural festival for China this year. It is so interesting to learn all this amazing history. An even better point is that the dynasties are a way to classify topics for China reports. For example, the Forbidden City was built in the Ming Dynasty. It is also so interesting to learn all the names of the dy dynasties, their rulers and meanings. Why I am saying this is because there is so much information that can be classified about ancient China based on the dynasties. This study helped me understand ancient China. Chinese dragons. 
Every year we do a cultural festival. It is different each year. This year we started ancient China. I'm going to share some of my favorite things. My first favorite thing was the Chinese dragons. We learned about them during our study of Chinese New Year. We also got to color our beautiful dragon. I like it because we get to pick our colors. Some people make them different colors so they are all very unique. This is one of the reasons why it is so great. It helps you be creative and you can color it the way that you imagine it. Chinese gods and goddesses. My second favorite work was Chinese gods and goddesses. I liked it because we learned about them. Before her work, I didn't know about the Jade Emperor, but I do now because I researched him. That's a great thing because I get to share it with my classmates and we all get to learn about them together. The Jade Emperor is considered the ruler of heaven, one of the highest ranking gods, and the very first of the Chinese emperors. Chinese New Year. Two of my favorite studies I did for Culture Festival were our large class map of China and our Chinese New Year study. I liked the New Year study because we had a fun celebration. We each received clementines, a fortune cookie, koala cookies, imitation Chinese money, and a red envelope. We learned how many people have feasts, see their families, and celebrate. It was interesting. There are also fireworks, decorations, and dragons. The celebration is filled with happiness and joy. Our Chinese New Year study is definitely one of the things that I liked about this year. Collaborative classroom map. The, th the second thing I really liked was a geography work, which included a map of China. We were each able to trace all of China and the surrounding countries on a big piece of paper. I liked it because it was a group work and we learned how to use the projector. Our next step is to color it together. Our, I, mean, I feel nice when I do it because China is a beautiful country. I like doing it because of this. Giant panda. In class we learned about giant pandas and it was super fun. The giant pandas were very cute. I even did one of my reports about them. I enjoyed that lesson. It was one of my favorite things we did for Culture Festival. Chinese paper making. I was one of the first students in our class to make paper for our ancient China study, and it was very fun. I chose to color yellow for my paper. I got yellow paper and dandelions and put them in a blender with newspaper we had ripped to tiny shreds. We also put water in the blender with the other ingredients. My paper really came out good. I enjoyed doing that work a lot. I especially like how it was hands-on. These two works were some of my favorites and I enjoyed them a lot. Ni hao, my name is Elliot. I did, my three Chinese reports were on dragons, games, and zodiac. My favorite one were the games because you can still play them. Um, my favorite uh, Chinese art project was the Chinese banner. I like it because I got to paint it with watercolor and then put my name on it in ink. My name is Estelle. The three subjects I decided to do on my board is Chinese zodiac, China clothing, and Chinese food. I chose to put the tiger and the rat on my board because I am a tiger and my sister is a rat. Did you know that only Chinese people, Chinese emperors uh, wore yellow? An ancient Chinese person's favorite food was rice and millet. I did this painting of a red lantern. These are the three reports I did for ancient China. This is ancient Chinese clothing, the Chinese zodiac, and the ancient Chinese food and farming. The last project I did was my name in Chinese.
Ni Hao. My name is Olivia, and this is my board that I'm going to present. Um, the three topics that I did are Chinese Zodiac, Great Wall of China, and music. This is the dragon painting I did, and this is my Chinese banner I did. It has, it has my name on it in, in Chinese. Are probably my two favorite Chinese artwork. And over here are the three reports I did The Great Wall of China, Chinese Music, and Chinese Zodiac. Ni hao, my name is Kai, and I did my board on the Zodiac, Chinese God and Goddesses, and art. I chose, I chose the rabbit because I am the rabbit in the Zodiac. I chose God and Goddesses because I think they're really powerful and my favorite one is the Jade Emperor. And I chose and I did calligraphy and silk and I chose calligraphy because there's my name on it and my favorite art project is um my my picture of a Chinese house and the avatar and my Chinese coins which is um which has symbols on them and my three reports are the chinese zodiac chinese gods and goddesses and chinese art ni hao my name is lily this is the board i made my presentation i did research on festivals silk making, and the ancient Chinese zodiac, along with two other projects, my banner and my ancient Chinese coins. Chin 